Hey guys, you're watching Super Nintendo. My name is AJ, and we are back on another episode of Redstone from Scratch. The series where we're going through the very basics of Redstone, and we've slowly made our way up through more and more difficult things, and now we're getting to some really, really cool stuff. So today we're doing automatic furnaces, and uh, these are very, very useful. And I've done them in a really simple way so that you can actually build these within a couple of in-game days of a new world. Just requires a little bit of iron. No redstone on these first ones. But basically, what you'll do is you get your ores, you'll stick your ores in the top chest, you stick your fuel in the second chest, and then everything that it smelts will automatically be pulled out. And the great thing with using these hoppers for furnaces is that this never gets clogged up. And if this never gets full, it will always be smelting. Another great thing with this is that you can put pretty much anything in here. I've got coal. I've got blocks of coal. You can put charcoal in there. You can put spare wood that you don't need. You can put old wooden tools that you no longer use. All of that stuff. You can just bung into the chest. You know, absolutely everything. You know, sticks. You just bung them in there. Any, any burnable fuel, just stick in there. And when it comes around to using it, it'll use it. Uh, so it's really, really simple, really, really great. As you can see, it smelts up um, without you having to take it out or, or do anything. But if that's not enough and you want something a little bit more meatier, you can double this up. And uh, you can have two double chests <laughs> on either side for your fuel. A double chest on top for God knows how you would have that much ore that needed to be smelted. But you can. And then you've got your double chest out down here uh, for all your outputs. And if this double chest down here isn't enough for your outputs, you can always add more chests and more hoppers to uh, sort of filter it out into. These are really, really simple to build. We'll do a quick tutorial on that. You're going to need a chest. You're going to need some hoppers. You're going to need a furnace. And all we're going to do is you're going to put down, we'll build the first one first. You're going to place your chest down wherever you want. You don't need to do it in the ground. I just do it for neatness sake. And then what you're going to do is you're going to crouch click on the side of the chest and make sure to crouch click on the side because that way, as you can see, the hopper goes into the chest. Okay? You're going to place your furnace on top and then you're going to crouch click a furnace on top, on the top of the furnace so it, the hopper points straight down and then shift click on the side of it so the hopper goes into it. Okay? Chest on that one, chest on that one, and you're done. And that's it. Fuel goes in the left, ores go in the top output is in the bottom chest okay and then if you want to double this up to make it a bit of a steroid <laughs> one all you got to do is do the same thing again but sort of flipped if you like so another hopper there another hopper there chest there chest there and then if you need more fuel space if I don't know if one chest full of blocks of coal isn't enough you can either put another chest on the side there or you could put a hopper on the back which makes it just a smidgen smaller um, you know, from the front, okay? With still the same amount of storage space. So that's a really, really cool way. Anyway, let's go on to the next one, which does require a tiny, little tiny bit of redstone, uh, but it's really, really cool. So let's say you're down in your strip mine, and you're mining away. Uh, we're mining, we're mining, we're mining, we're getting some ores here. And then it's come time to come back to, like, the hub of your strip mine. You know, everybody always has a hub, don't you? You have a, your base either on the surface or in a cave, and then everybody, including me, has a staircase going down to your favourite strip mine level and at the bottom of the staircase you want to put a little chest, a little minecart chest okay and then have a rail going up your stairway or to the side of the stairway which goes up to this contraption what we're going to do is when you've you've filled up your inventory but you haven't finished strip mining yet you open up the chest, you put in your ore you push the button, the minecart goes off to your base it'll empty out the chest and then it'll come back to us Ta -da! Which is wonderful. B meanwhile, while you're going back and mining, this is all automatically being smelted up for you. Now, I recommend building this actually in your storage room because it would be amazing to then hook this up to our automated storage system that we built on episode 00 before we even started sort of the very basics of it. We sort of done a, a showcase one uh, of the automatic sorting system right under my cursor. And then that way... It would sort out the the redstone and the iron and the gold and everything else that you had in it. It will automatically sort it straight into your sorting system for you, which is great. Uh, really, really simple to build. And it's really, really basic. There are more complicated automatic sort of minecart related furnaces. 
Uh, but I've done this one in the simplest way that I could possibly build. And there is only one downside to it, which doesn't actually turn out to be all that much of a downside. Okay, so if we get two types of ore, let's get gold and iron. Because you're going to come across all sorts, aren't you, when you do it. We put both of them in here. The way I've got this set up is the minecart will only come back when the hopper is empty. Okay, but the hopper can only be empty. Let's say we've got iron in here. Gold can't go in there as well, so gold is going to sit in this hopper until the iron's done. Which means the minecart's not going to return until the gold has, has is being smelted, at least starting to be smelted. But I thought, well, that is naturally much of a downside, because you got to think, if you put all your stuff in the chest, you hit the button, you go off to do more strip mining, you're pretty much guaranteed for that to finish everything that you've ever smelted before you finished before you fill up your inventory again and need to come back to fill up the chest. So, it's not really a downside. It takes a long time to strip mine. You're not going to need to come back here again to fill it up uh, for a very long time. But as you can see, the iron is all in here, ready to be smelted. But the gold is in here. Once the iron is finished, boop, the gold will then go in and the minecart will come back. Okay? Really, really simple. And it doesn't take long to cook up the iron or anything like that. Really, really short. So, let's do a very quick tutorial on this. I'm sure you could build it for me circling around it. But we'll do it anyway. First, we're going to build our um, our starter automatic furnace that we've done. So, hopper going into the side. Furnace on top. Hopper on top of that. And then we're going to do, instead of one hopper, we're going to do two hoppers on this side. And the reason for that is if we placed the chest here. You can't open it because of the block on top. And I'll explain why we need the block on top of that in a moment. So this is where you put your fuel. You put all your coal and everything. All your wood. Anything that can cook uh, in there. Anything that can burn, sorry. In there. So that's what we've got here. And then you're going to need some sort of block and your rails. You're going to need some powered rails. You're going to need some normal rails. And you're going to need some lever. You're going to need more powered rails depending on how, far, how long your staircase is. But you're going to need a minimum of two in the setup that I've got here. So first thing you're going to do is place a powered rail, oops, shift click a power, powered rail on top of the furnace. You're going to place a block here, a normal rail, normal rail, powered rail, power that, and then you can have your normal rail going to the start, okay? So that's where your start's going to be, and then we'll stick a button on there. That should be fine. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. Okay, and now what we're going to need is uh, some block, or some blocks, some uh, a redstone comparator, a piece of redstone dust, and a redstone torch. It's that it's that small. It's that limited. That's why I've done it extremely small. What you're going to do is you're going to place a block down here with a comparator on it, and this is what's going to read if there's anything in the hopper or not. You're then going to put a block... Straight onto the side, I shift clicked onto that. If you normal click onto it, you'll either put it into subtraction mode, which you don't want. Uh, in fact, I think you'll do it anyway. Yeah, if you click anywhere on this comparator, you'll put it in subtraction mode. Don't have it in subtraction mode, so remember to shift click onto it to place stuff. On this block here, you're going to place a redstone torch. You're going to place a block on top of that. You're going to place a block on the side of this um, powered rail. And then you're going to place a block there with one piece of redstone dust on it okay now the reason we need a block here is we need a solid block to power this redstone uh this uh powered rail if we have uh, a slab for example if i grab a slab here this will not power the block and if it doesn't power the block it means that the powered rail will never be lit which means the mic up will never come back so you need a, a solid block here. it could be any solid block anything you want uh, to go there, and then that powers it. So, how does this work? Basically, the powered rail is going to be always on by default. As soon as something goes into the hopper, it's going to turn the comparator on, which turns the torch off, which turns the redstone off, which is no longer powering the block, which means the powered rail is no longer powered, so the minecart sits there. The, mi the chest minecart sits there. Once everything from the hopper has gone into the furnace, the comparator will then turn off again, which lets the torch come back on, which powers the redstone, powering the block, powering the um, powered rail, which pushes the minecart back down to the start. So, this is where <laughs> all my talk hopefully is going to pay off with a test run. 
So we're going to put down some. I'm keeping it low amounts of iron just so we don't have to wait all that long for it to come back to us. So we stick the stuff in there. We hit the button. We didn't put a powered rail down. <laughs> you need a powered rail at the start. I forgot to mention that. Okay. We'll put 20 in there then. Hit the button. Off it goes. Up it goes. Aye. Up it goes. And we're failing. <laughs> Isn't it awful when I fail? Uh, it's because the track wasn't long enough. The track needed to be a little bit longer. Uh, just to be able to get the run up. So we put the stuff in there. Off we go. It goes up. It stops on there. It lets everything feed out. Then powers it and comes back. You've seen it work. Uh, it's just because the... Um, this little bit of track was too short and it couldn't get up there uh, with enough speed, enough momentum. Uh, stick a little bit more in. I just like seeing it. I just like it coming back to me. Boop. Push the button. That's one final test. Please stay up there. There we go. <laughs> and we're done. Alright guys, uh, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, and we shall see you guys. Don't forget to put fuel in it, otherwise it ain't going to cook anything. And we shall see you in the next episode.